In this video, I'm going to show you how to write data to EEPROM and also how to read data from EEPROM, but making use this time of the EEPROM header file. Uh, again, what I'm going to do in a previous video, I've shown you this design. This is actually what I've done on Proteus design. And I'm going to make port C from 0 to 5, PC0 from, uh, well, from C0 to C5. I'm going to make those input pins. Again, I'm going to activate the pull-up resistances. And if this value on my port C is the same as the value that's been programmed into the EEPROM memory of the microcontroller, uh, once they are the same, uh, I want to switch on this LED. So first of all, we must just write the data again into the EEPROM. So if I go to my Atmos Studio program again, uh, and in a previous video, I've already said, please do not do your writing uh, inside the while one loop, as you will definitely destroy your memory extremely fast. Uh, your writing should, should occur outside the while one loop. Um, so what you do, if you want to make use of this uh, header file, the EEPROM header file, you must again s include it in your program. You must include it there. And then you can start by, as soon as it's included on EEPROM, there are three things that you can do. You can specify uh, EEMEM here. I'll talk about that just now. And you can specify, let me quickly show you what I mean by specify. As soon as you start typing in EE, it's going to give you three options. You can you can uh, uh, double click on EE mem. So this says this is um, you are referring to the EE memory. Uh, let me do it again. Uh, if you look at this EE prom read byte, so this says listen here. I want to read from the EE prom, and if I type again EE, it's going to be a write byte. So in our case, uh, we are first going to specify the EE memory name and then we're going to write a specific byte and then afterwards we will then read and compare it. So just to show you how easy it is, is once you've included the header file on EEPROM. The first thing we, we just need, we need to quickly discuss is this. Uh, as soon as you, if, if you want to make use of this header file, uh, you are going to declare, in this case I'm declaring a char, you can declare an int, it doesn't matter, the normal uh, data types can be declared. Um, and here we will basically say, uh, you, you will specify a name, you will choose a name, any name you can use here, I, OK, or whatever you want to use. Uh, my var, that's the one I've chosen here. My var is basically, it says, listen, my var is a register and it's located into EEPROM memory. That's what it is. So your compiler will uh, allocate a specific register, and you don't know where it is, but it will allocate a register in, in EE memory, and that, that it will stay in that specific location. So once you use the EEPROM header file, you do not specify any addresses anymore. You just say, there's the name of my uh, variable that I want to use, and it is sitting in EE mem and the compiler will assign it. I've also declared again a compare E and a compare P uh, as chars in my specific program here, and that will be placed in normal um, st uh, is, uh, static RAM of the microcontroller. So I'm not, I've discussed this program before, just quickly here I am just making uh, PB5 and output pin that's going to the LED on my Arduino hardware. I'm just using the Arduino as a hardware and I'm using the software of Atmos Studio of course. In this case here I've specified PC0 up to PC5 to be all inputs. If you directly after that go and uh, make the pins high that means you activate the pull-up resistances so that means you do not need any pull-up resistances Oh, sorry, you do not need any, yes, pull-up resistances externally, uh, you, because now it's specified as internally. And then I'm just making sure that the LED is off, connected to PB5. And as I've said, we're first going to write. So all we have to do is, as soon as you started typing here EE, it, you can actually double-click on EE write, 
and this is what you'll get so but you will not get what sits inside here because you have to specify what you want to write to the ee prom memory so what you sp specify here is this this uh, uh, and symbol here means that's the address of my var so you, what you want to do if you want to write a byte you must specify the byte here the byte is specified as hex 23 and i want to write it to the address of my var so you don't know what that address is but the compiler knows that so you just tell it go and write it to where my var sits and it will actually do it so you don't have to do anything else uh, in this specific program you don't need to do it uh, at all let me just see what yeah well it's written this it will write this data into uh, this address and it will also again previously we saw that you have to wait for the right enable pin to go low all those things it happens automatically then uh, when you i just want to remove this it happens automatically uh, in this writing to the EEPROM. So you don't need to check any, you don't have to set the master write enable, you don't have to check the, the write enable pin or anything. It happens automatically. So now in my main program, I am now going to uh, read what sits in my var. So again, if I start at, what I've done is I've just said compare E, that's my variable that I've declared, is, and then I'm going to read what sits at the address of my var so uh, this specific function which has been declared actually in the header file uh, you just say here uh, go to the address of my var and go and read that byte that's the function name and that will then be stored into compare e which is the which is a uh, variable which i have declared um, what i do here again just like before is because the whole of pin port C was declared as basically as uh, input pins is I collected so here I collected the, the, the whole the whole port value but then I end it with 3f and that is just again to remove the upper bits number 6 there's not really a 7 but but yes let's see 6 and 7 let's say 6 and 7 will be removed but it's actually only 6 that I'm in interested in to be removed uh, and then that is placed into compare E so in other words we will test what is sitting on the output of port C and that will basically the value will then be stored in compare P so compare P will have the value of the port sitting on the port and compare E will have the value that is sitting inside the microcontroller uh, sorry inside the EE prom and then it's just comparing if those two are equal to each other so co if compare E is equal to compare P then switch on the LED uh, on port on pb5 or switch off the led on pb5 that's basically it so if i can go now to my proteus design i've also done this on that same exact same platform and exact same uh, circuit so if i change i've already loaded the program in here uh, if i change this and let's say at this stage it is 0 1 uh, 0 2 sorry 0 3 uh, if I make this also open, if I open this switch, it's 07, etc. But so, and you can see nothing is happening to the LED. But as soon, let me just get here, as soon as you, I have loaded hex 23, so 3 is actually opening that one and also opening that one. So this is high, that is high. So 3 is going in there. This is 0011 is 3. And if I make this a two year, if I open this specific uh, switch here, as you can see now it's 23 and the LED is switching on. So this is working uh, absolutely perfectly. So it is possible and this is why you, uh, you can declare, for instance, in the beginning here, I've declared only one now, I've declared my var. Uh, you can declare a lot of them. Uh, and in your program is just referring to the address of those different uh, variables and it will go and either write data to it or read data from whatever you specify and this is how data is written into eeprom and also written or read from eeprom by making use of the eeprom header file thank you